Hi, this is Ryan with a very post-game commentary. Um, we have Ebro versus YHSXSX. YHS has brought Yurina A2, Megumi Shinra versus Hebro's Yukihi A1, Karuno, and uh, Hanaka O. I believe the bands we're going to see here are Shinra from Hebro, or rather... Kibra will ban Shinra, and YHS is going to ban Karunu. Which makes sense. The onus is kind of on Hebro to approach. Well, alright. This is what I would normally say, but Yuri, Yukihi A1 has a uh, weft warp, which will allow Kibro to attack from a longer distance than Yukihi normally can. Hebro uses to open his umbrella at the end of his first turn, which I find to be kind of interesting. I think he does this so that he can, you know, because he knows he's going to draw wield on his next turn. He can use wield when he closes his umbrella again, or something along those lines. Otherwise, I have no idea why he actually did, does that. Currently, both players have focused once. Um, Hebro chose to focus and move forward. Because he's planning to throw out next turn. Okay. And he can throw out and still recover Shadow from the throw out because he's going to have Wield and his, uh, in the name of, no, Resonant Flag of Virtue together. YHS moves forward. And Hebro step forward, put him into the necessary range to hit with it. Yeah, so Resonant Flag of Virtue comes out. Q2, he gets to do a bunch of uh, card draw and other business. Draw a card, put a card from his hand on the bottom of his deck, and he can choose to put Resonant Flag on the bottom of the deck. And then uses wheel to scoop some of that shadow to aura. Very, very good play. That was a well set up mulligan and a good first pass plan. I just closing distance and playing balsam. Um, looks like, yeah, one growth, so it'll be a 2 1 on Hebro's turn. Good chance that it doesn't disenchant and cause a flinch when you, when you play it like that. Got the 3 2 thresh though, so growing it makes perfect sense with that. Um, Bro chooses to take that to life, even though he could otherwise take it to Aura. But Hero's position isn't terrible here. He has uh, plenty of flair for various specials, including many plays of the season's turn again. Fix the deck, he's probably going to bloom since he's playing it so proactively. If 
Yeah, the spirit, right? The one one coming out. And blooming into guardian spirit. This will cause seasons turn to flip down. Um hidden power for positioning. And the one ones are actually going to be particularly problematic for YHS to deal with in this matchup, especially once Destructive Spirit comes online. Oh, right, right. So he played this for the wrong one, and he takes it back here and swaps it for the other one. He wants to have uh, Weft, which is a 1-1 one -one that increases the range of the next non-Yukihi attack you play in both the near and far directions. And then puts itself on the bottom of the deck, which is handy for Hanukkah. It helps keep the uh, bloom chain going. It lets you just keep more cards in your deck for long your time to reshuffle longer. Because Hanukkah, is, especially with Season's Turn again, is at her strongest when her deck is empty. Because she can just keep pulling from her discard pile to her play, or to her deck. Until that runs out. And anything you put from your discard pile to your deck will just be immediately drawn if your deck is empty. Because it goes on the bottom. So he draws the 2-1. Attacks and... Why well, just opts to take that to life. Which uh, breaks Balsam. Due to its unguarded attribute. Um, then uh, Destructive Spirit is bloomed. And it's enough of a threat that YHS yeah, knew that that was coming, so decided to take that to life, I think, to maintain the 3 aura. At this point, you want to have 3 aura to avoid taking that 2 life hit. But... I don't know if it makes that big of a difference, honestly. Like, Ebro took that two life hit earlier, and he's evened it out without YHS taking a two life hit. He's taking all these paper cuts. Okay. So, the early spreading palm here it is kind of a tip off that. It you're running Kamakura Legacy, but I guess so is playing Yurina A2. So Harmony here attacks with 2-1 uh, after Appeal because Ebro decided to take the 4-1 from Appeal to Aura, which just seems insane to me, but he knows there's no other card, and he can recoup a lot of his uh, aura with Season's Turn, and potentially wield. So Hebrew has exactly Destructive Spirit and Weft from the bottom of his deck. And one card left in hand. Which I believe would be Hidden Power. Because he moved forward, that's going to trigger Harmony, which is out of attack range from the forward movement. That allows uh, YHS to do a recover and a focus action. Uses uh, another point of vigor to retreat after moving forward. 
Hidden power at distance 3. And then Weft, which is going to improve the range of Destructive Spirit right in both directions, making it a 4-6 to six range attack with no reactions. So, of course, YHS has to take this to life. And then loses the rest of his aura here to Destructive Spirit, which Hebro ups not to bloom. Weft returns to the deck. And Hebrew gains one life from the Asher attack of Destructive Spirit. And then uh, opens Heavenly Flower Way for a two flare. This will give him a slow accumulation of aura on both turns. Or flare if it manages, if his aura is full, to refund itself. Okay, so yeah, that, that action right there was Ebro fixing the automatic deduct one token from every enhancement at the start of the turn. Because the, the tokens from his enhancement are supposed to go to his aura. That's why he took aura, to Shad or aura from Shadow. Rush comes out as a 4-3. And now there's discussion about what will happen if Ebro decides to react with Season's turn and take this attack for uh if he re oh, okay so if he reacts the season's turn then he performs a recover reaction that recover reaction will then trigger harmony to make a 2-1 2-1 attack will happen before the 4-3 or the 3-2 thresh attack so the question becomes whether spreading palm will buff the harmony attack or it'll buff the uh, 3-2 Thresh Attack. And the correct answer is that it buffs the 4-3, or the 3-2 attack into a 4-3, and then Harmony is a 2-1 that happens first. The reason for this is because the attack Thresh is made beforehand, because it's, an attack is made as soon as it's played, and there's an opportunity for it to be reacted to. So it's a little counterintuitive, but this was resolved correctly. There's a few comments here that are about about how it hits the same result, or like it wouldn't make a difference either way. I don't think that's strictly true. I don't completely understand why they say that, because two three twos would result in Ebro having one more aura and one less life, I believe, which actually would have made a pretty significant difference in this game, I think. But as it happens, Season's turn results in Hebrew having four aura, so he can block the four three and he take two one to life. I'm really going to have to ask someone why that outcome would be the same, but that's fine. They're doing it the correct way, so it's all good.
Get this aura from Shadow for the Heavenly Far Away. And we get Resonant Flag again. Which might even be able to uh, scout the wield from this deck. Assuming he rode discarded it for an action. This is a pretty scary position to be in for YHS, because Hanukkah usually brings, uh, in the name of this flag, you're sitting at zero aura, you know destructive spirits in play, Yuki, he has all kinds of 1-1s. One so yeah, I think doing the uh, recover actions is absolutely correct here. Um, maybe even holding a card is a mistake, but it does because oh, the reshuffle next turn will be even. Taking 1-1s one to life is very sad. Not as sad as taking a 1-2 to life. Yep, so the 1-1 one, one pretty much guarantees that this will pass through Aura to life. Um, this is another card that's pretty difficult to deal with. It's very good economy if you give your opponent the Aura, and it's pretty good damage if you back up yourself. Reducing the distance to 1 is probably the correct play here though. It keeps uh or it makes it more difficult, I suppose, for Hero to play out any follow up attacks. Although he does get the dictate. And so we're back at zero aura. This is a great time to Kamakura. Would be even better if you had one more flare, I guess, but... Taking four aura from your opponent is also fine. Would it have been worth taking that dictate to life, though? Like, if you had, you'd have one more aura, so okay, you probably end up having to focus that off. They could make use of all the basic actions you get from Kamakura. You'd get two life damage on Hebro, but he'd be at four aura and more easily able to bring about his own specials and whatnot. And you would have taken a 1-1 one, one to life, which is a terrible trade. So, yeah, no. The 4-2 is probably fine. It just takes an easy turn, just some recovering with, with uh, Flower Away and the extra card. And gets another Dictate Poke for 1-1. One, one. Eventually, they go back and do this again. Um, the other side effect of Kamakura is that you get to keep the number of cards in your hand equal to the flare you spent on it. So YHS is going just to have 
huge turn here with a five card hand. Ebro's only got two aura to work with, so very precarious position to be in here. Okay, three displayed first. Fresh is played. The uh, seed token on Reed puts us at virtual distance of four. So. Even though there's only three distance tokens there, it is in range and does get the buff from having an enhancement with the seed token. And then Flail is followed up. So that's uh, so far two life damage. That does to Aura. Two cards left. No flare. Slash. Very late in the game to have this be played. Um, just nothing bad about playing it. I'm just wondering where it's been all game. Also, for another seed token, or it's being grown again, I guess is the way to look at that. So it's going to be another 2 1 on Hebra's turn. Take to life. Hidden power. One one. Your five aura here. Yeah, that's that's pretty obviously going to go to aura. And then from shadow to distance. This puts us at range 5, by the way, because of Reed. Be relevant for the next play. Start to Spirit right, it's no reactions. Again, Reed puts us at the perfect range for that, so it's almost like Reed's getting thrown back in YHS's face here. Because otherwise, it would be pretty difficult to play that. And. Hebrew chooses to bloom it to distract his spirit, which is quite scary. So he is extremely vulnerable right now. I'm going to see a petal storm here again. Has to be taken to life. Distance should be one lower here. Yep. All right. And yeah, that pedal storm also broke the balsam, so it'll be no flinch from that. And then Hebro pops in the name of this flag. He's got so much flair going on right now, it's ridiculous. Um, and he decides to rethink things. I think, um, not entirely sure why he does this. I think it's mostly just because if he's going to draw a card, you should do it before he commits to his big attack. In case he draws an enhancement that he can put the tokens onto.
I think specifically he'd be looking for Dictate here. Getting it on Heavenly Flower away wouldn't be the worst either, though, except for that it's already disenchanted. Okay, so he doesn't find the enhancement. And yeah, plays down the 3 2, which is going to set White just to one life. Yurina is in full resolve now. Yurina was already in resolve, but. This is also kind of a scary position to be in. So he probably was going to recover to 5 here. Yeah, he does with wield. He had to be careful and position himself so that he had full aura. Otherwise, he potentially loses to final blow. Well, not quite. Never mind, he can't do that because there's no, there's no reshuffle threat. So he's just playing around uh, various Urena Resolve nonsense. We're going to see Harmony come out here. That threatening the 2 1 if any aura damage happens. Or if any uh, basic action changes to his aura occur on the next turn. And then Appeal is a 4 1. That actually is. Very strong here, it's just not quite enough. If he chose, because he chooses to take it to Aura, he has to take life damage from the Harmony. Um, or he would have had to take life damage from the Harmony if they, if they were in Harmony attack range. Um, what else could possibly have happened here? I don't think there's much else. Just if he had to take it to life, he didn't have the or aura he needed to block it, then he would lose the rest of his deck, which would put him into a pretty helpless state. He'd only have the one card in his hand that he could use. Oh, but then Harmony wouldn't trigger either, so he'd still be stuck at... He'd still be able to reshuffle and play his life. Yeah. No, that, that game was pretty locked at that point. 